It looked like a routine test. Another massive cylinder of steel launched into the blue. But Flight 11 was anything but routine. From the moment it left the pad, it was already dying. And SpaceX knew it. They designed it to suffer. Not to prove what works, but to expose what doesn't. This ship wasn't armored. It wasn't whole. It carried gaps where heat shield tiles should have been. Scars where insulation was missing. It was a vessel built to fail because somewhere inside that controlled collapse, inside the turbulence and flame, was the data they needed to build what comes next. To catch the future, you have to let something fall apart and watch closely as it breaks. It left the sky the same way a memory fades, slow, glowing, violent. After climbing flawlessly into the upper atmosphere, Starship began its descent, not in panic, not in chaos, but in choreography. Belly first, wings angled, a controlled fall designed to look like surrender. At 58 minutes into flight, 50 kilometers above the Earth, it began banking, turning not just its path, but its purpose. This wasn't a straight shot down. It curved. It drifted. It danced through the air like a relic, remembering how to fall. And through all of it, the flaps held. Unlike Flight 10, where parts were stripped mid-re-entry, this time, the surfaces stayed intact, scarred, discolored, but whole. Below, the Indian Ocean waited, the final test. Three engines fired. The ship flipped vertically, igniting a moment of impossible control, hovering above the surface, still bleeding speed, still fighting gravity. It touched down with a softness that betrayed the violence it had just endured. And then, as if on cue, it tipped and detonated a quiet end to a deliberate fall. But even in that fireball, SpaceX saw exactly what they were looking for. A shape preserved, flaps that didn't shatter, a heat shield bare in places, but functional. In that final splashdown, something survived. And that survival changes everything. New drone footage showed details the live stream couldn't. You could see the ship's surface up close. Charred, yes, but not broken. Flames danced from the top vents, Vapors hissed between the flaps, and somewhere in those signals, SpaceX found clarity. The missing tiles hadn't doomed the vehicle. The exposed steel had endured the heat. And despite hints of burn-through, the structure held until the very end. It didn't just land, it guided itself there, within three meters of its target. That kind of precision, under that kind of stress, is more than data. It's proof. Flight 11 didn't just test materials. It tested a philosophy. That resilience isn't about perfection. It's about designing for failure and knowing exactly what failure can teach. The team at Starbase didn't hope this ship would come back intact. They hoped it would come back instructive. And it did, because that wreckage didn't mark an end. It marked a threshold, the point where one version ends and something far more capable begins. The thing about failure is that it tells the truth, quietly, without ego. It doesn't care what you intended, only what worked. And Flight 11 told SpaceX exactly what it needed to hear. Not with fanfare, not with triumph, but with data, with wreckage, with heat marks on steel. It revealed what held under pressure, what melted, what barely held on, and most importantly, what doesn't need to be there next time. Because next time is already being built. The Starship Phi 3 won't just be a new chapter, it's a different book. Almost every visible and invisible element of the ship is being reimagined, and it starts at the base, the engines. The old Raptors were good, but they were complex, tangled in wires, cluttered with external tubing, powerful but vulnerable. The Raptor 5 3 changes all of that, still running on methane and liquid oxygen, but now with a cleaner profile higher thrust, and fewer failure points. Instead of 230 tons of thrust per engine, the new Raptors deliver 280. That's a 20% increase, not just in power, but in confidence. And to do that, they simplified everything. All the hoses and plumbing once exposed are now pulled inside, protected by a single skin of steel. The engine isn't just stronger, it's quieter in design, smarter, harder to break. But more thrust means more fuel, so the booster gets longer. New fuel tanks stretch its body further than V2 ever was, 
and at the heart of it, a new transfer tube, wide as a Falcon 9 booster, running methane from top to bottom like a steel artery, a rocket inside a rocket. SpaceX didn't just add volume, they restructured how that fuel moves, faster, more efficiently, with fewer thermal choke points, and above those tanks, the grid fins. They're fewer now, only three, instead of four. Heavier, stronger, thicker, not scattered, but aligned in a new T-pattern that changes how the booster balances itself in descent. One less fin might seem like a risk, but Elon Musk's favorite design principle is simple, delete parts, and see if the system still works. So SpaceX deleted a fin, they integrated the tower's catch pin into the structure of the fins themselves. They redesigned the load path. They took a gamble, not on chance, but on physics. They also removed the 10-ton interstage adapter. For every hot stage separation until now, that ring sat between booster and ship, shielding the tanks from engine fire. But it was disposable, temporary, wasteful. So now, they're cutting it out entirely, replacing it with a triangular lattice structure, lighter, permanent, built into the body of the booster itself. At the top of the methane tank, new reinforcement ribs protect it directly from the upper stage's exhaust flames. Because if you want to build a reusable rocket, you have to stop dropping pieces of it into the ocean. And what about the ship itself? Starship 53 keeps the silhouette, but changes almost everything inside. The V2 taught SpaceX how many things could go wrong at once. Explosions in engine compartments, flaps torn off mid-flight, Entire sections failing under plasma flow. So they rethought the plumbing. They reinforced the heat shield. And they brought in the Raptor Phi 3. Less likely to leak, to rupture, to trigger that rapid, unscheduled disassembly. Everyone's learned to expect. It's not just about surviving launch. It's about surviving return. Again and again. Because this isn't about a one-way trip to the moon. It's about land, refuel, and rise again. And that means catching it. SpaceX has never caught a Starship upper stage before, but they're getting ready. New docking ports are being added. One Starship will send, the other will receive. In orbit, they'll meet like mechanical animals, nose to tail, transferring liquid fuel in zero gravity. And the ship that fills up will go farther, maybe to the moon, maybe Mars, maybe beyond. But first, it has to survive the fall and land on Earth, not in water, but on the launch pad itself. Tower 2 is being built for that. Stronger, taller, simpler, with arms, not to guide, but to grab. The original Mechazilla was oversized, experimental. These new arms are smaller, faster, tighter, because now they know how much surface they really need to catch a ship. The evolution isn't just technical, it's philosophical. You don't just build the next rocket, you listen to the last one. And in the silence after Flight 11 exploded, SpaceX wasn't mourning, they were sketching. There is no final form, no perfect version, only iterations. And SpaceX knows this better than anyone, because every rocket they build is temporary, a step, a sacrifice, an offering to the future. Flight 11 wasn't the last starship, it was the last one willing to fall, the last to teach by breaking, and now, the focus shifts, not just to performance, but to permanence. Starship 53 will be the first to attempt what was once considered impossible, full orbital refueling. Two ships connecting in the vacuum of space, transferring fuel like breath between lungs, one built to give, one to receive. Together, they extend the reach of human ambition to the moon, to Mars, to the unknown. But that future doesn't start out there. It starts here, with landing, with reuse, with survival. The next starships won't fall into the sea. They'll come back to the pad, hovering over concrete, caught midair by steel arms that don't flinch. And that changes everything. It means no more rebuilding from scratch, no more tossing engines into the ocean. It means speed, efficiency, a tempo we've never seen before in spaceflight. But precision demands pain. That's why Flight 11 mattered. It gave SpaceX the confidence to try again, harder, faster, closer to the edge. Because catching a falling object the size of a skyscraper isn't engineering, it's choreography, it's trust in math, and in steel. And yet, even when it works, it will still fall again. Because every new version comes with new risks, 
Every new attempt will find its own way to break. But that's the point. SpaceX isn't avoiding failure. They're absorbing it. They're feeding it into the design process, making each rupture count, each detonation useful. The goal isn't perfection, it's resilience. Because to leave Earth behind, truly leave it, you need machines that can survive the violence of re-entry again and again. You need heat shields that don't just resist fire, but learn from it. You need ships that carry the memory of every fall and still climb back toward the sky. Flight 11 was the final fall of the old generation, the last time a starship was built with sacrifice in mind. What comes next will rise with a different mission, not to fail, but to return, again and again, as infrastructure, as habit, as routine. But before routine, there must be ritual. Before reusability, there must be ruin. And that's what Flight 11 gave us. A reminder that progress isn't clean. It's chaotic, loud, fragile, that every new tower must be built on the wreckage of the last, and that sometimes the most valuable thing a ship can do is fall apart. Now that the smoke has cleared and the ocean has claimed what little was left, there's a stillness, one that doesn't speak of failure, but of insight. Flight 11 didn't mark a triumphant ending or a dramatic collapse. It marked transition, a closing loop, a final experiment designed not to impress, but to inform. This wasn't a rocket meant to survive. It was meant to endure just long enough to teach. And in doing so, it passed the torch quietly, deliberately to what comes next. Because SpaceX isn't chasing perfection. They're chasing iteration. Each fall, each fireball, each scar left on steel is part of a design that is learning to resurrect itself. And for the first time, we're not just talking about launching machines into space. We're talking about bringing them back, intact, reusable, repeatable, not as spectacle, but as infrastructure. What comes next will rise on lessons carved in heat. It will carry memory, not just in data, but in design. And it will fall again, because falling is how it learns. And every controlled descent, every near miss, every catch attempt that almost works, brings us closer to a future where launch and return become routine. If that vision moves you, if this cycle of collapse and refinement speaks to something deeper in you, stay with us, subscribe to the channel, share the signal, and leave something behind in the comments. Not because we ask, but because we're building something here too. And this, this is only the end before the evolution.